Yes, this is an old article. It is from February 22nd, but it was posted in response to one of my tweets yesterday about the Birds of Prey film. And then someone subsequently in the same thread asked me if I would do a video on it. And then another person followed suit with asking if I would do so because it was his birthday yesterday. And I told him, unfortunately, I will be out with family all day, so I will be busy and cannot do it. But I will get to it if I can today. And true to my word, I'm getting to it. Daylight savings time sucks, so I'm still tired. I'm still feeling the effects of losing an hour's worth of sleep, but I promise, so here it is, and that is. Birds of Prey Harley Quinn movie is the best DCEU film so far. Hello, this is Mara Jade, and I'm here with another bra article. Subtitled, Harley Quinn's team-up adventure Birds of Prey may be struggling at the box office. I love that phrase, may be struggling at the box office, but it's still the best DC Extended Universe movie so far. Pray tell, please explain why you think it is the case. Now, if you like this movie, if you, if you enjoy this movie, more power to you. I saw it once, once was enough. It was boring as hell. I don't think it was as woke as people are claiming it to be, but that's just my opinion. However, they ruined characters. There was only one character in Huntress that they was even remotely close to its comic book origins. Everything else they fucked up royally. But let's get into this article and see what this person, this author, Anna uh, Demar Demarogue, I sure, don't know if I'm pronouncing her last name correctly, gives as far as why she thinks it's the best so far. Oh boy. Okay, Birds of Prey, I'm not saying that damn subtitle, may not be doing that well in terms of box office. I love that. May not be doing well. It is bombing royally at the box office. But the Margot Robbie lad flick is arguably the best entry in the DC Extended Universe thus far. Starting in 2013 via Zack Snyder and Henry Cavill's Man of Steel, a movie I did enjoy, by the way, Warner Brothers' own superhero franchise has been around for quite a while now. It has had its fair share of troubles, especially when it comes to its divisive reception. That's okay. Goes without saying at this point, but it does not in any way play into your opinion. And that is your opinion. You're stating it as if it's a fact that this film is the best so far. Now, after a reevaluation, it appears that DCEU has finally found its footing. I would argue against that, given the Suicide Squad, Justice League, and this film. Now, there have been good ones amongst the... Uh, franchise so far there have been enjoyable ones and then there have been ones that have laid eggs and this one is the one that it would be in the latter category for me as one of the standouts from the critically panned but financially successful 2016 movie suicide squad fans were eager to know when robbie would reprise the role of harley quinn i was not one of those fans i she gave a decent performance but that's not harley quinn to me <sighs> Following a few planned spin-offs that have yet to uh, make production progress, she was finally confirmed in Kathy Ann's Birds of Prey, which teams up her up with an entirely different crew against the new antagonist in Ewan McGregor's Black Mask. Alright. Go uh reiterating what I said, they royally fucked up nearly every character in that film. Uh let's see, except with the exception of Huntress, because that was the one that was close to her comic book origins. Uh, they made uh, Renee Montoya old for whatever reason and a uh, uh, basically a man hater, so to speak. Mis I don't want to say Misandrous, all right, Misandrous, but you know she she had her moments. Let's see, uh, Black Canary, Diana Lance. They race swapped her. There the there is a Black Black Canary in the uh, DC universe. They could have used who did not have a name or really true origin, so they could have used this movie as a vehicle for her origin and given us a truly diverse. Black Canary, but they decided to race swap uh, Diana Lance because of name recognition. And then get to Cassandra Kane. Holy fucking shit, did you royally screw that character up? That is not Cassandra Kane. It's like you took the, the nickname Orphan that she has and went with it literally. This is a girl who has been trained just about nearly since birth to be an assassin, to be a killer, to be just about devoid of emotion. Like she could look at you and know five different ways to kill you. And then, like that. And you look at the character in that movie? No, that was not fucking Cassandra Kane. And you're telling me this is the best movie so far? Are you serious? Oh my god. Okay, set in the DCEU continuity following her split from the Joker, Harley bands together with Huntress. <sighs> Dinah Laurel Lance. No, it was not Dinah Lance. Renee Montoya. Fucking hell. And, and Short Round Sister. Because that was not Cassandra Kane. As they all strive for their personal emancipations. Why? I hate I hate that. 
Because the emancipation part of it is from the patriarchy. It is a fem the feminist undertone in this film. Is it blatantly in your face? I don't think so. But the fact that you use that word, knowing what third wave and fourth wave feminists call, uh, or at least claim to be emancipating themselves from, is just bullshit. There was like, they, what, except for the exception of Black Canary because she worked for Black Mask, there was no emancipation needed. Harley Quinn had broken up from the Joker. That's it. That was the emancipation for the film. Everyone else, no. <sighs> First of praise, an enjoyable movie with a clear plot. No. Oh my god, no. Strong action sequences. That was his only saving grace for the most part. And even then, even then there was one that was holy fucking shit cringe. And healthy amount of humor. I did not laugh really once in that entire movie. I can't even remember even anyone in the theater that was watching it with me. And there was all of maybe like 15, 16 people total, including me in that theater when I was watching it. I don't remember anybody laughing. Making it superior to the other DCEU entries so far. Again, this is just your fucking opinion, Anna. Now, you can have your opinion, but it's an opinion. And you're stating it based on this... You're stating this enjoyable movie with a clear plot, strong action sequences, and healthy amounts of humor as if it's fact. It is not fact. It's what you're feeling. And your feeling is that's the case. My feeling is that is bullshit. But that's just me. Since its inception in 2013, the DCEU has rolled out a total of eight films, most of which were financially profitable, but things are a bit different when it comes to their critical reception. Again, that's all based on someone's opinions. I enjoyed Batman uh, v Superman: Dawn of Justice, especially the director's cut, the ultimate edition that came out. That's the movie. That's the version we should have gotten in theaters. I enjoy Wonder Woman. I love Wonder Woman. I enjoyed Man of Steel. I enjoyed Aquaman, and I enjoyed Shazam for what it was. The other three uh, go as follows: Suicide Squad and Justice Justice League tied. Then. Way, way down, you have Birds of Prey. For me. Okay, several of the franchise's releases have been downright controversial for a mix of reasons. Movies such as Man of Steel and Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice are regarded as divisive. Some like it, myself and others, while others deem them bad movies. Again, just your opinion. There are also Justice League and Suicide Squad plagued by production woes and included studio meddling and extensive reshoots. This comprised compromise their director's vision, significantly affecting the film's res respective qualities. Yes, that was Warner Brothers. It wasn't exactly the movies themselves. That was Warner Brothers stepping in and, with their collective heads up their asses, trying to emulate Marvel. And we, DC fans, are sitting back here going, what the fuck are you doing? You're not Marvel. You're DC. Stop trying to copy them. After a rocky first few years, the DCEU franchise appears to finally be getting into the groove of things thanks to some personnel changes and a DCEU plan reevaluation. Since then, the series has rolled out fun and unique movies such as James Wan's Aquaman, a, a movie that I enjoyed. I thought I was actually surprised at how much I enjoyed it. I put it, uh, I, I would put it behind um, B BVS, Wonder Woman, and Man of Steel, but not far. I, I'm more of a Batman fan myself, and Shazam I found it enjoyable as well. Not great, not as great as I would have liked it to be, but a very enjoyable superhero slash family film. And David F. Sandberg's Shazam, which I enjoyed. Still, Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman continues to be widely regarded as the DCEU's best outing thus far. I put it just slightly behind BVS, but not far. Those are my top two in the DCEU uh, movies uh, gambit so far. Historically inaccurate as hell, but a very enjoyable film, and actually what female empowerment, strong female characters are. Birds of Prey, Kathy Yan, Margot Robbie, look at Wonder Woman, look at that film, and look at how that handled strong women, and look at how your film tried to handle strong women. But even the smash hit wasn't immune to having a generic third act like most comic book films, which had a negative impact on its quality. That would be where I would, you know, put it below, is because of the third act, because of the villain, because of how 
it, it, it seemed kind of lackluster. But at the same time, that was a minor grip gripe for me at that point because I enjoyed it like the first two thirds immensely and the third act overall. And you're, I love how you're using this as justification for your opinion. Now, again, it's just your opinion. You can have it. But don't say this. Don't state these things as if it's fact. Because it's not. DCEU used Birds of Prey strength lies on its overall quality. Pretty tell. Each element of the Yan-directed film has been carefully executed for a much stronger final product. Okay. Stronger final products. Uh, let's see. Uh, reshoots. Um, the trying to emulate Quentin Tarantino films and failing miserably in terms of the plots. The humor falling flat. The Some of the men being portrayed as uh, idiots overall. Uh, Harley Quinn. It's focused heavily on Harley Quinn even though it's supposed to be a Birds of Prey film. And, and, and then the even then, it's not a Birds of Prey film because you gave Barbara Gordon the shaft, and that's not fucking Cassandra Kane. That's not fucking Black Canary. That's not fucking Renee Montoya, really, even. And they only even remotely got cl Huntress close. Um, she's probably the closest of the characters that they got right so far. Uh, Black Mask had moments where I could see Black Mask in the character, but then they ruined his character with him throwing pillows and um, crying and throwing hissy fits. So, no, it was not a stronger final product. While the focus was largely on Harley, which makes sense considering that she's really its leading lady, is a fucking Birds of Prey film. Harley Quinn was never part of Birds of Prey. If you wanted Harley Quinn in a Birds of Prey film, you know what you should have done? You know what they should have done, Anna? Do you know the comic books? Huh? Do you know the comic books? Harley Quinn was part of the Gotham City Sirens. Yes, you could have had the Birds of Prey fighting the Gotham City Sirens. Badass female heroes, badass female villains, and you would have had a whole female empowerment centric film right there. On top of it, on top of it, Anna, Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy get into a romantic relationship with. So they are check mark off the LGBTQ community's quota. Oh my fucking god! The movie did a great job shining a light on her supporting characters. No, it didn't. You know what, the movie, in my opinion, the movie was like, Harley Quinn show, Harley Quinn show, oh by the way, Black Canary's in it, Harley Quinn show, Harley Quinn show, oh by the way, there's Huntress, oh by the way, there's Renee Montoya. That was it, that was the movie. It was the Harley Quinn hour with the Birds of Prey in the background and there you go, oops, oh shit, we gotta put the Birds of Prey out front and center by the third act because that's what they're supposed to be. Hmm. We're all new to the DCEU. New to the DCEU, but not new to comic book fans. And you royally fucked up those characters. Granted that some would argue that they would have wanted more from the other birds. Yes! But as an introductory outing, it did a great job establishing their characters. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. They were thrust to the background because they had to focus on Harley Quinn's emancipation. Even though that's the fucking subtitle to the movie. Oh. Teasing enough of their respective history so that audiences want to see where their future inventors will take them. Those are hot topic normies, by the way. The ones that like to cosplay as Harley Quinn and Joker because relationship goals. It's not comic book fans. Alright. Aside from the heroes, Birds of Prey's bad guys were also well done. No, they weren't! McGregor perfectly played the eccentric scientist. Roman is a psychopath. He's not ex he's not eccentric in the way you would define eccentric. He is a person. The where okay, one of the moments where I saw Black Mask truly come out as Black Mask is when he has Harley Quinn tied up in one scene and he asked her, "Do you know why I'm going to kill you?" Because I can. That is what Black Mask would say. That is a psychopath. That is someone who would sooner as kill you as blink. Who would easily off you as he were ordering fast food. He does not throw pillows, throw hissy fits, or cry, or have little tantrums. So don't say that he played Roman Sinus perfectly. Who's fueled by wanting to expand his criminal activities throughout Gotham. 
Meanwhile, Chris Messina's Victor Zaz was downright sadistic. He had his moments. Again, had his moments, but that was not Victor Zaz. It was not, wasn't. Making him the perfect right-hand man for Black Mass because they elevate each other's brand of crazy. Admittedly, the film could have done more to differentiate their dynamic from past DCU or comic book movie villains in general. There were several nods to their supposedly deeper personal relationship. Oh my fucking god. Some might argue that the characters were one-dimensional villains, but for what it's worth, the pair was a solid antagonist force to Harley Quinn and the rest of the birds. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. Finally, Birds of Prey was able to maintain a level of consistency throughout the whole film. No, it wasn't. It tried to emulate Quentin Tarantino films with the whole uh, flashback scenes and so forth. Jumping from one to the other, one back and forth and things and tying everything together. No, it just it was a jumbled mess. It was a tonal, it was tonally all over the place. And the humor, where I could give uh, Quentin Tarantino credit as far as his movies was not there for this film. And this is the same writer, screenwriter, for Bumblebee. Let that sink in. Each act was properly defined. No, it wasn't. Decorated with great meta jokes from Harley and quirky action set pieces. The action was really the only saving grace for most of the scenes. One incredibly fucking cringe one, and everybody remembers the hair tie uh, scene that was... Uh, not leaked, but um, teased as part of the promotion for the film. But again, even then, it was like, eh, I've seen better. Again, my opinion, and I'm saying it's my opinion, and I'm not trying to say that it's fact. You, however, are in this article. Most comic book hero films fall apart at the end, typically because of CGI-filled action sequences with generic dialogue between heroes and villains that feel bland, <sighs> However, this wasn't the case for Birds of Prey. Did you see the fucking ending to this film? Did you see what happened to Black Mask? Did you see the hair tie fight scene in that um, fun house? Harley Quinn on skates cannot, at 110 pounds, cannot push a 150 to 250 pound man easily. But yet, she was able to because wham and power. Uh, from the circus sequence, rollerblade, and motorcycle and car chase, to its closing scene with the heroes enjoying their well-deserved Mexican food. Again, you gave Barbara Gordon the shaft. It's like they did not know each other throughout 75% of the film, and then you had to believe that in the last 25 or so percent of the film, they're all of a sudden fucking besties? Are you fucking serious? And over Mexican food, and giving Barbara Gordon the shaft again? Hello? Oh my fucking god. Yan made sure that the final act of a DCEU film was anything but bland and uninventive. You know how I would sum up the film? The gist of the film is Harley Quinn babysitting a foster kid waiting for her to poop out a diamond. That's the gist of the film. And you're saying that's good? Birds of Prey is an ideal DCEU movie. Oh my god. With Marvel Studios kicking off the MCU five years before Warner Brothers got in the comic book franchise sandbox with their DC properties, one of the biggest talking points... Point... Points! Grammar! You're supposed to be a writer. One of the biggest talking points for DCEU and other budding interconnected franchises is how to differentiate itself from its predecessor. The MCU formula, it is a formula... I don't care if you like the MCU, it is formulaic popcorn fun. That is my opinion, come at me. Has already been well established for quite a while, for better or worse, so the challenge is to create something that feels entirely different, but still follows the same storytelling format necessary to build a cohesive universe, which is what Warner Brothers has failed to do. They meddled, they stuck their noses in where it didn't belong, they made executive decisions that you had to ask, what the hell were they thinking? So it has not been cohesive so far. I will agree with you there. However, to say that this film, this film is the best so far and is most cohesive is just laughable at best and just basically what the fuck at worst. 
Oh, so that's, yeah. DCU has had some solid entry, so it took advantage of the fact that it belonged to a bigger world. See, love them or hate them, Zack Snyder was trying to do that. Now, I enjoy Zack Snyder. I enjoyed his vision. That's just my opinion. Do not tear me apart in the com in the comments, please. But that he had a vision. He was trying to tie everything together. And then Warner Brothers stepped in because they were, instead of letting him finish it, at least, they decided to meddle and fuck everything up. And now it's forcing their hand to reevaluate the franchise. They would not be in the position they are now if they would have just let him finish and then, then start reevaluating the franchise. Or, at the very least, start it out with origin films, much like what the MCU do, did, to allow people to get to know these characters before you thrust them into the world, so and so forth. Now, most people going to see these films, like myself, know the characters, but not everyone. There are no people who are coming in just wanting to watch a film and they're not going to know the dynamic between Batman and Superman or Wonder Woman, or Aquaman, or anything like that. So you have to kind of build it up. That's what I will give the MCU credit for. Oh, it effectively used what was previously established in the bigger DCU film without getting beholden to it. Oh. Harley's arc was kickstarted by her breakup from the Joker, while the DCEU's Batman was mentioned here and there. Meanwhile, it built on its own story with most of its key players' new characters. It was basically wa waiting for a little 13-year-old, or however the fuck old she was supposed to be, poop out a diamond. Oh my god. Birds of Prey also nailed the tone that the DCU can thrive using. Much of the complaints about Joss's League was that it was so watered down that the end result was almost similar to an MCU film. Yes, it was almost similar to an MCU film, because it was Joss Whedon who came in and basically reshot is about the entirety of the film and inserted his own brand of humor into the DC universe that did not belong and it tried to emulate the MCU like what was what he did with the Avengers and it does not fucking work it did not work with Justice League, Justice League and it's not working with the Birds of Prey this approach was in response to criticisms about Batman v Superman supposedly being too dark to appeal to a broader audience again subjectivity I like Dark. That's just my opinion. I liked... I love Batman. He's my favorite superhero. And he's... His origin. His stories. His characters are dark as all hell. But I love it. So to say... to try When you try to please everyone, you end up pleasing no one. And that's what Warner Brothers is doing right now. Birds of Prey proves that there is a way to incorporate comedy into the DCEU without feeling like some Marvel knockoff. If this is the movie that's doing it, holy fucking shit, is it feeling miserably? It's funny and witty, yet gritty and sometimes even downright brutal. The only reason that they got the R rating was because of the fact that they wanted to drop the word fuck every so often in the film. If you were to take that out and just tone minor, minorly some of the fight sequences in sound, that's a PG-13 movie at best. At best. In hindsight, it's the film Suicide Squad wanted to be but failed to accomplish. Again, I would watch Suicide Squad as bad as I think that movie is before I would even remotely consider watching Birds of Prey again. One and done, I'm not watching it again. I don't care what people are, I don't care if it's free on cable. I'm not watching that film. Aside from Harley Quinn, there's no word yet on when the rest of the cast of Birds of Prey will next grace the big screen, if ever. If ever, because again, it's clawing its way to breaking even, and I don't think it will break even before it leaves the theaters at the rate it's going. So, at the rate it's going, and they would make a sequel to this film, they deserve to lose that money. The movie sets up a couple of stories for the characters moving forward, but with its less than ideal box office, less than ideal box office, there's no guarantee that audiences will see them anytime soon. Again, if they do the sequel to this film, when it's barely breaking even at best, they deserve to lose whatever money they put into it. All that being said, its final performance is by no means a reflection of the movie's quality because objectively, subjectively, not objectively, subjectively, it's one of the top tier, if not the best DCU entries thus far. No, you are stating a fucking opinion and opinions are subjective. Opinions are like assholes and guess what? You have one. We all have one. 
So no, it is not objectively the best film. It is subjectively the best film to you. Whereas me, I would put it way, 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 way down at the bottom. That's my opinion about this film. Now, I think this film's biggest sin, uh, two biggest sins were the characters and the marketing. The marketing shot itself in the foot. The marketing was telling people who were complaining about the trailers, who were complaining about the, what they were doing to the characters, that they were misogynistic, sexist, and racist, and this movie was not for them. So guess what those people did? They stayed home. They saved their money, maybe went to go see the Sonic film, maybe just didn't go to the movie theater in general, or saw a better film instead, like 1917, which was a cinematic masterpiece, if I were to give my opinion about that film. But anyway, this is a bra article. That was my rant for it. I promised I would do it for his birthday, and I'm going to create a thumbnail. I'm going to post it. I'm going to tag him on Twitter to let him know that I did this video for him. Next video, to keep with my schedule, will be Tuesday and then Thursday, and then live stream again on Saturday evening with Lethal Lightning, so catch me then. In the meantime, I will continue finding these articles. I will continue giving my opinion on them, and this is Mara Jade, and I'll catch you on the dark side. Take care.